in the wonderful world of make-believe, six-foot oversized turtles that are also ninjas is about as far out there as your typical X-Files episode. And when you get older, it's really amazing how your childhood heroes never seem to get dull, no matter how cheesy or unrealistic. But with age aside, I still go absolutely crazy for these four green, upright, walking, pizza-loving ass-kickers. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus for the PlayStation 2. Much like this game itself, Konami made the attacking very simple. X for weak attacks, square for strong attacks, as well as circle for jump. Depending on your controller settings, of course. To me, the buttons are really boring. But if you really want to kick some ass, buy yourself some time away from your enemies and hold down the square button to charge your strong attack to perform kind of a special move if I had to call it anything else. You're also equipped with throwing stars, which are a real pain to aim from long distances. Yet they're a necessity for some of the villains that you just can't get too close to and have to fight from afar. At the end of every level, your performance with your chosen character is graded according to how much offense, defense, and aerial attacks you used. To me, their grading system is a bunch of BS, because I've used all three possible graded areas perfectly just to make sure I got straight A's, and I still got C's regardless. And after five years of college, you think I'd be used to getting C's by now. Now this game was not ranked very high on the boards of a lot of critics, which I find hard to understand. I mean, what's not to love about this game? All TMNT games are pretty much the same in my book. To me, if you talk down one, you're pretty much downplaying them all. TMNT 2 Battle Nexus has some really awesome animated cinematics between the levels of your story mode. It's just like watching the cartoon. The Battle Nexus story isn't the best I've ever heard, but it's intriguing enough for you to push through the game and complete it just so you can say you watched the ending. I mean, it's a kid's game. You can't really expect a spectacular finish to a game like this, can you? And I mean something really spectacular. Something like the turtles find out in the end that Splinter is pregnant. And I know Splinter's a guy. But what a twist that would be, huh? I, I mean, who'd have thunk it? Overall, the unlockables and cheat codes in this game are basic. New costumes and other unlockable players like Slashier and one of my all-time favorites, Casey Jones, as well as other good cheat codes for the gameplay. But the coolest feature in the game is the classic arcade game from 1989. Ah, oh, the hundreds of dollars I spent pouring into this game as a kid. If you want to win, you gotta spend the money. It took me $34.50 to beat this game at my local arcade at 9 years old. But now you can do it right in the comfort of your own home. And I do find it to be a lot harder with a PS2 controller as opposed to standing upright for two hours in your local mall. And maybe I'm just old-fashioned, but look at this piece of art. It's so retro. I mean, I freaking love it. The gameplay in Battle Nexus is just okay. I think the double jumping and striking accuracy is fine, but I'd like to have seen a little more hit combos. You know, possibly unlocking new combos in each section, or even a cool group attack when you're playing with multiple people. And minus the inability to properly adjust the camera angles to suit your needs in this game, I felt overall it was a winner, but like I may have mentioned in other reviews, these kinds of games are going to be generation specific. I've seen that some of my childhood cartoon characters have been modernized recently to suit the newer generations, which is fine. I mean, keep the idea alive. This game didn't do anything fancy though. It was the same old turtles fighting the same old bad guys in the same old fashion, and you know what? I wouldn't have had it any other way.